Johnny Velasquez rides the horse on Tuesday. I know clearly explained already. Perhaps for Graham, just you know, they explain the decision for people who may not be aware as to why Johnny's going to be riding instead of Joel. Yeah, I mean, I think we had three choices after Dubai. We could stick with Joel, who'd never ridden Royal Ascot before. Um, we could pick up an English rider who obviously was familiar with, with Ascot, but not familiar with the horse. Or we could have somebody like Johnny, who um, to me is one of the top riders in the world, and he's, he's ridden Animal Kingdom, and he's, he's won at Royal Ascot. So I, I think it was kind of a no-brainer, really. And for you, um, it's always been to come and try and win with this horse has achieved so much. So, and you say this is a career-defining horse for you, and then you're trying to carry on into a horse that was career-defining for so many people in Frankel. It's uh, big shoes to fill, but for you, Animal Kingdom's been everything as far as your career is concerned. Yeah, and I wouldn't even want to go there, but it's, uh, it's tremendous to be running in the race that, that he won last year. Um, you know, I, I grew up... Um, I think Sir Henry Cecil was one of the people that I probably admired the most when I was growing up in England, so it's very... Uh, it's, it's almost emotional. It's, it was fantastic last night to watch those races again, and uh, it's, it's amazing to be here, really. And when you look back at those days, what he achieved in the uh, Kentucky Derby, he came from nowhere to win, an extraordinary performance, then obviously going to Dubai as well. I mean, he, this horse obviously seems to just relish his racing. He does. I mean, he's, he, he's had a checkered career, obviously, because of his injuries, but I think it's all the more remarkable as how he's kept his form, and uh, he, he's, you know, I'll never train another horse like this. And he had the spin at, uh, at Ascot, and obviously very different surroundings. What, what's your gut feeling, that the horse will cope with uh, what, he, what, he's, what he's going to be faced with on Tuesday? I think he will. I mean, I was concerned the day we worked him at Ascot. We had quite a bit of rain the day before. Um, it was very soft by our standards, something that he never would have, would have raced on raced on or trained on, and he, he seemed to handle it very well. So he, he, he handled his workout that day. He's handled the, the gallops uh, in Lambourne very well. It took him, you know, it definitely took him two or three weeks to, to get adjusted to it, but uh, since then he's really, um, he's, he's fitted in pretty well. At what stage did you suddenly, with your own, you think Royal Ascot is a legitimate aim for this horse to bring what might be the, the curtain down on his career? Well, I think Barry and I had talked about it before, um, you know, at some point last year, perhaps, but it, I don't think it was really till we we got to Dubai and he ran his race that we uh, that we really decided to to come here. Yeah, Barry, uh, bring in Barry now. You, you obviously bred the horse. What what's this horse mean to you? And in a way, the the, the sort of filling the, the shoes of Frankel. This horse has achieved so much in his own right. Forget a, a real chance to cement his place in racing history. Yeah, I, I'm like Graham. I don't want to even get into the Frankel thing because that horse is from a different planet. You know, our horse is a very good horse, but I, I've, I've hardly ever seen one or two horses that you could mention in the same sentence as Frankel. Um, this horse is, he's an extremely versatile horse. Um, I came up with the idea of trying to find somebody to buy the horse like John without knowing whether John would, would be the guy. I wanted to find somebody that had a top stud that would be able to stand the horse and give him his best chance. And what I did was I designed a plan to run this horse in the World Cup and at Ascot as a temptation to buy the horse while he was a racehorse instead of waiting until the horse was a stallion because any racehorse is worth more than any stallion when the, before they're retired. So that was the idea. Um, Winning in Dubai is about money. It's a lot of money. It's the richest race in the world. It's got prestige, but Ascot has the most prestige. And winning a race at a mile for a horse like this that's a mile and a quarter horse would give him a very unique stallion credential. So that was the thought process behind it. And then there's the sporting aspect of it, which appeals to me. Personally, I have, I'm one of 20 partners just in my portion of the horse, and these people, I, I try to provide them with good horses, and they allow me to indulge myself by doing crazy things like running horses like this all over the place. How easy, John, you obviously came, uh, he, he's, were you easily tempted? Obviously, you were easily tempted. <laughs> yeah, well, I inspected the horse, um, 
before uh, the Breeders' Cup meet um, in uh, Santa Anita last year. And I had been tracking this horse for some time so that uh, Barry's intention of finding a stud and my interest in the horse converged after the Breeders' Cup when I saw what I thought was his probably his best performance uh, as far as I was concerned. They ran 131.78 that day for the mile at Santa Anita, which was a new course record. He was beaten, in my view, uh, a little unluckily uh, by the horse of the year in America, Wise Dan, who subsequently reaffirmed his, uh, his position. And I thought that was an exceptional performance. And uh, it's at that time that uh, things got a little bit uh, uh, sort of more advanced with Barry and his team. And we came to a conclusion on a transaction, which uh, we're very happy to have done. And, uh, and um, now we look forward to the next week. And we're assuming this, is, this will be Animal Kingdom, Swan Song, win, lose or draw. Well, that decision is not entirely up to me. We've got partners and I'm certainly, you know, it's a matter of sitting down like we did after Dubai and Barry had this idea of uh, Royal Ascot and uh, we came on board with that idea uh, after Dubai was uh, over and done with. Um, the idea now is that we do retire him after this race and, in fact, uh, a fee has already been announced for Australia and mayors are being booked, etc. Uh, I never say, I like to say never because things can always change, but that's the present intention, yeah. Uh, and to win at the Royal Meeting? Well, it's one of those bucket lists issue for me, issues for me. Um, I feel very privileged to be here with the favourite of the first race on the first day. Um, and uh, I must say, uh, it, it's, you know, it's something I've dreamt about doing a long time. We've, uh, my son brought a horse here over the last couple of years. Um, he was successful at other meets, but was unable to win here at Royal Ascot. And uh, this year I'm involved in this horse with Barry and, uh, and our other partners. And uh, I'm thrilled to be involved in it. And uh, it's, you know, as I say, it's a privilege to be involved in it. And you are, Graham, you're training the hot favourite for the race. But, um, and people just think you could turn up and win. But presumably as the trainer, you know that that's not the case. Yeah, I mean, there are so many variables here with the weather and, and so many unknowns with the horse. It's... it's you know, I think it's it's a pretty. Um, I think it's what racing is all about, and I think more and more we get away from taking on these challenges. I mean, it, it is a big challenge for this horse, and you know, we're not ducking anybody. We're uh, we're not taking his racetrack with him, and I think it's very admirable that John and Barry wanted to do this. And you obviously you were brought up in here in Newmarket. You're now based in, as a Brit now based in America to win at Royal Ascot. That would be something presumably for you. Just uh, uh, you've achieved so much with this horse. Uh, another sort of major point on your CV? Yeah, I mean, certainly, like John says, it would be something that would be on my bucket list. Um, I, I had never imagined I would win the Kentucky Derby or be lucky enough to win it. Um, and now to be here at Royal Ascot is... Uh, I, I grew up six miles from here. I drove past the jockey club, you know, two or three times a week. So it's uh, somewhat surreal to be here pointing for a race at Royal Ascot.